Hello everyone. In this tutorial, I will be talking about how to add cross sections to your sketch to make it look more interesting and more organic. And we will be sketching these two objects, which is going to be a trash bin with a concave surface and a computer mouse. Um, so first of all, uh, why do we uh, use cross sections? Whenever there is a change in the character of a surface, we are adding a cross section there, uh, such as in this example. I have both concave and convex areas in my design and uh, I'm finding the peak point of where that concave area is and then adding a cross section there and I'm doing the same thing with the convex area I'm finding the peak point and adding a cross section there that way I understand that there's a change in the surface character but I'm not only adding those cross sections on one axis I'm adding both on x and y axis so therefore I have this S curve right in the middle in the symmetric axis of this uh, surface. So maybe we can start sketching this um, trash bin to understand better. This trash bin is going to be made out of a uh, rectilinear bounding box. So I will sketch this bounding box first. It's going to be about that tall. Okay. And my form is going to be slightly tapered. It's going to be wider at the top and smaller at the bottom. And therefore, I will turn this uh, bounding box into a transparent box so all 12 edges will be visible. Just like that. Now um, I can define how small this bottom, the base of this stretch pin is going to be. To do that, I will put uh, the center point so that my design is symmetrical. So this is the center point and this is the center axis. So all of my lines are going to that same vanishing point. And I can decide how narrow it's going to be, how small it's going to be. If I can offset it this much, it has to be same on the other side. Same offset distance. And roughly the same in the front and at the back. All right. And now I can round its edges. I have to decide how wide this radius is going to be. I'm going to use a bigger radius at the top and a smaller radius at the bottom. Then I'm going to connect these dots with a arc that is tangent to those lines. Same over here and same back here. And on this side as well. Then I will connect these dots with straight lines. And uh, the radius at the bottom is going to be smaller. And I'm not going to add that one since it's not going to be visible. And uh, I will connect these two dots. Since I'm going to add this concave surface, I'm going to leave it as it is. And I'm going to connect these two arcs with a straight line. This side is going to be darker because my light is coming from left hand side. Therefore, I'm going to add more line weight here. Maybe a little bit darker to increase the contrast. The other thing that I can do is I can add a um, double line over here to show the material thickness. So 
so it's not going to be too thick. If it's if you make those double lines too thick, it will look as if it's uh, a small object. Uh, other than that, uh, maybe we can connect these uh, dots where the radius starts and finish, and it's going to be cross section line. So, which means it's going to be slightly darker than your construction lines. And it's going to be same over here and same at the back. And maybe we can have that same cross section lines down here at the back inner edge. So that inner edge will be visible and it will be connected to that radius at the bottom. So it should go that direction. That should go this direction. Okay. Now it's time to place our concave surface. And from this point, my object should be that deep. So this was the center axis, my symmetry axis. And from that point, it's going to be about that deep. Now I'm going to connect these three dots with a simple arc. And I can add line weight and darken it more. I will darken the left hand side more than the right hand side because the light is coming from the left hand side. Um, normally when you look at this object the right hand side is darker but if it's a concave area, concave surface, you will be doing other way around. You are making the left hand side darker than the right hand side. Other than that, uh, if my surface was flat it should be, uh, this is the midpoint, it should be straight line like this However, it's concave and its peak point is going to be right here. And I'm going to create this arc. Again, this side is going to be dark compared to the other edge. This is going to be lighter. Okay, so that uh, edge over here, that line weight, kind of communicates um, that it's a concave surface, but we need to, uh, in order to communicate effectively, we need to place that cross section here, which is going to be starting from that peak point and connecting that point over here at the top with a simple arc, just like that. Furthermore, we can put another cross section on this axis. So it is going to follow our finishing point and there's a radius here and goes slight flat and then curves in and out and then flat again all right so the hierarchy between the line weights are important especially if you're uh, going for more complex shapes more organic shapes so I recommend having uh, some uh, line hierarchy. So as you know, as we discussed in the line quality and line weight uh, tutorial, our darkest lines are going to be our outer contour lines. And then our uh, next darkest line will be the part lines. And then the inner contour lines. And your lightest lines are going to be the construction lines. And in between inner contour and construction lines, it's going to be the cross sections. Okay, so basically, do not forget to put your lines in order. Other than that, um, if the transition is sharp, as we have in the uh, trash bin, it is going to have a pointy transition uh, where the cross sections are. And then as well as we have to have that inner contour edge, inner contour line, where those two surfaces meet. However, if you want a softer transition without any sharp edge, then you're going to round your uh, cross sections and you are not going to place any inner contour lines there. All right, so let's go ahead and switch the computer mouse. I already calculated its dimensions, its proportions here in this sketch. So from top view, it's going to have this rounded uh, back and in the front it's going to be wider. 
overall dimension is going to be 3 by 2. So, and I'm going to divide that 3 unit into 2 by 1. And I'm going to place the height, the peak point of that mouse, right at the back, one unit away from the back. And it's going to be one unit tall. Okay, so those are the dimensions that I'm going to follow. And I'm going to do the same thing, same steps in perspective. I will start with the base and create this box that is 3 by 2. So this is my 3 by 2 area. I need a symmetry axis, uh, so which is going to be in the right and the center. Therefore, I need to find the center point. That's the center point. And I will draw a line going through that center point towards my vanishing point. OK. So from there, uh, I can start drawing my at the base of the mouse. And uh, the back part is going to be rounded, and that radius is going to start around one third of that back part right here. I'm not going to draw this arc since it's not going to be visible. And this one is going to be rounded just like that. And in the front, it's going to be curved. And it's going to have rounded edge, and it's going to be flat there. And on this side, it's going to be slightly concave, not too much, just slightly. I'm just going. To, I just want to add an area there for to rest my thumb. And it's going to be rounded again. Okay, so now it's time to place our cross sections. The peak point of my cross section was. Uh, right here at the one third of the, uh, from the back area. And it's going to be again one unit tall. So from this point, I will draw a vertical line that is about one unit tall. So if this is one unit, it's going to be roughly that much. Now, uh, I have these three points. This is where it's going to start. That's the peak point, And this is where it's going to end. And my arc that I'm going to place right in the center is going to be tangent to this line, which is parallel to this base. Now, I will move my arm. I will place my wrist where the center point is, of my arc is. And it will start up and curve and then flatten. And back here, it's going to be tangent to the straight line and this straight line there, so which is going to be something like this. Now I have to do the same thing on this axis. It should be tangent to this one, as well as this line here. So which means it's going to go, start straight, and afterwards curve like that. And same on this axis, it's going to start straight, and curve down here. OK. All right. Um, now that I have my cross sections, I can connect these um, arcs. So I'm going to connect this radius with this arc. And this arc with this arc. I'm connecting with a tangent arc. And I will connect this arc with the space. This side could be darker since it will receive less light. Okay, and the space is going to be dark as well. And we can darken the front a little bit because the mouse will cast its shadow on the ground. All right, so we have the overall form. Now maybe we can add a concave surface here to rest the thumb. And it could be somewhere uh, here. And uh, when I'm adding that, I'm using line weight. The top part is light, uh, darker than the bottom part. And uh, that helps me to communicate that it's a concave surface, but still it's not sufficient. 
I have to put a cross section there. Maybe the cross section could be somewhere here, which is going to start here and then finish there, which means it's going to be curved like this, going there, and then creating this concave surface there. Furthermore, we can add a scroll wheel. Scroll wheel could be on that raised surface. On this rectangular area. And it's going to be a cylinder, of course. And we can add some texture to it. So maybe we can add more line weights. Add more contrast so that our drawing stands out more. Just like that. All right. So that's it for uh, cross section. Of course, there's a lot of a lot of things to talk about, but I guess uh, this is sufficient uh, to begin with. So yeah, if you have any questions, you can. Uh, send them, uh, you can write them in the comment section. Um, so I will be more than happy to answer them. So have a great day. Thank you very much for watching.